Hey everybody, how's it going? Today we're going to be talking about a cool vulnerability called Command Injection. Now, if you've never heard of Command Injection, basically this happens when unsanitized user input is passed through an application in the form of maybe a, a web form that a user can fill out, maybe it's in cookies, it could be in uh, PHP parameters, anything that can be passed to a web application. And then if that input supplied by the user is executed in some form by maybe a Python exec statement, possibly uh, sent directly to a bash terminal, PowerShell, etc. in some way that it could lead to users executing arbitrary commands. Now this is a really cool vulnerability to exploit. It's uh, part of the OWASP top 10. So this is a very common vulnerability to find. And what we're going to be using to demonstrate this is called the Damn Vulnerable Web Application or DVWA. Now I'll drop a link below to where you can download this. Uh, they have a GitHub repository and instructions on how to install it and videos as well. Now we're going to pop down to the DVWA security tab down here and make sure we are set to low. So there's three separate difficulties that we can do low, medium and high. And then there's impossible, which of course is impossible. So we can't do it. Um, so we're going to go through command ejection on low, medium and high and take a look at what we can do. So we'll pop over to this command injection tab over here and it says that you know we can ping a device and enter an IP address. So we'll start off uh, by just entering localhost in here. All right, and once we enter localhost and hit submit, let's see what happens. So we can see we get some sort of output here um, and it looks like it actually went ahead and pinged localhost. Now let's compare this to the output of running ping on a regular terminal. So I've got an Ubuntu VM here, and we're just going to run ping localhost. And we'll take a look at that. Now, if we look at these two outputs side by side, I know this one on the right's getting cut off a little, but you should be able to see that these are very similar, almost exactly the same. Uh, so it looks like whatever we are entering into this, uh, you know, this form right here is actually being passed to ping and being executed in bash. Now the awesome thing about DVWA is that we have this button down here to view the source code. So if we open that up, we can actually see the source code of this web app that we are trying to attack. Now, basically the gist of this is the IP that we enter in the form right here is being passed to this target variable. And since we're in a Unix system, we're gonna fall down to this case down here. Uh, there's gonna be a shell exec call which is going to basically pass whatever you give it into a, a uh, bash shell and execute it. So we can see it's going to run ping dash C4 and that C4 is just means a count of four. So it won't ping forever. It will only do it four times. And then it's just going to append the target, which again is the IP that we enter in that form. So if we go back to our VM and we type in ping dash C4 localhost, the output that we get from that should be exactly the same as the one that we get um, from this web app over here. And you can take a look and see they're exactly the same. So a cool thing we can do, uh, which actually is the command injection vulnerability, is that we can try to tack on an extra command here so that some, you know some arbitrary code gets executed in a way that was not intended. So let's see, if we go into our VM here, sorry that froze for a second. So here's the command that we're being that we're executing in the web app, right? Now we have no control over this part right here. This is always going to be there. And then anything else we can enter uh, whatever we want after it. So there's no sanitization in place. So what we can do, for example, is put a semicolon here. Now a semicolon in bash acts as a terminator, but you can still list additional commands after. So this is how you can execute multiple commands in one line. So for example, if we put in semicolon who am I, it should run uh, four pings against localhost, stop that command, and then run who am I. So we can see we've got the four pings going on here, and then we have who am I being executed. Now there are a few different ways that you can do this. For example, instead of using a, uh, a semicolon right there, you can use a double ampersand. Now that is a logical and, so it will run the first command, and after that succeeds, it will run the second command. So we can take a look at that. And that should give us the exact same results as before. Uh, another common one that you can uh, get for command injection is a single pipe. 
So that's just going to redirect the output from this command to the input of this command. And we can see that we do get the command execution on the second command. And then the last one that we'll show that's pretty common is the, the double pipe, which is a logical or. Now this one can be a little tricky to get working on command injection. So let's take a look at what happens if we just run this. So we get our four pings as usual, but you can see it didn't actually execute who am I. Now this is because the double pipe, like I said before, is a logical or statement. So if the first command succeeds and does not throw an error, the second command will not be executed because it's already evaluated the statement is true. But since the only things that are forced into this shell from the web application uh, it's hard coded in is that ping dash C4. So if we were to enter something like uh, just a double pipe in who am I, we'll get rid of this localhost, then this ping command should error out because it doesn't have a valid syntax because we didn't supply an address and the who am I command should be executed because the first statement here will be false. So we'll try to execute this next statement and see if that's true. So we can see once we run that, we get an error from ping and it does execute the who am I. So now that we've proven these concepts in our local VM, let's take a look at what we can do in the actual web app. So let's put in localhost like before and we'll put in a semicolon and type in who am I. Once we hit submit, it should run ping four times and we get the who am I. And in this case, it's www-data. So we just successfully executed commands on this system. Uh, we could go in and just put a semicolon in again and terminate it and do something like cat slash Etsy password, for example. And we get the contents of the Etsy password file. Now, this can have dramatic consequences as you know, there are really no loopholes that we have to jump through to get RCE on this box. We already have it directly from a web application, which of course is extremely bad. So this is something that you can really find in some production applications. Um, a lot of you know, hack the box machines or OACP machines will utilize a technique such as this. Um, typically what you would do after you get command execution is you would try to get some sort of reverse shell. So we could you know, put in a semicolon, we'll type in which and C to see if netcat's on the box and it is. So from there you could put in a semicolon and then a payload to give yourself a netcat reverse shell, so on and so forth. But that is the basics of the low-level command injection. So again, just to solve this low-level command injection problem on DVWA, the easiest way to do it is just to pop a semicolon in there, type in who am I, hit submit, and we have proof of concept for command execution. All right, and now that we have shown how a very basic command injection vulnerability happens, hopefully you're getting a better idea of how this works, how unsanitized user input can be passed directly to some sort of function that will directly execute the commands. So what we're going to do now is take a look at uh, the medium difficulty. So we'll go to the DVWA security tab, change it from low to medium, hit submit, and we will go back to command injection. So you can see it's the same web form, but if we open up the source tab here, sorry, this is the one from before, let's hit view source again, and we can see that now there are some substitutions in place where uh, it's going to do the same basic concept where you know it stores the IP we enter into target, but it's going to filter out this double ampersand and the semicolon. So this is something that's you know a basic filter that you may see, but this is definitely considered bad practice because as we saw earlier, there are multiple different ways you can perform command injection attacks, uh, especially more than just using the double ampersand and semicolon. So if we enter any sort of payload that just doesn't use these two things, we should be able to get past the medium difficulty. So let's close this source. And instead of using a semicolon or the double ampersand, let's use the logical or like we showed before. So we'll just type in a double pipe and then who am I? And then hit submit. And we can see that it did execute it as www data. So we can take a look back at our VM here and just verify why this works. So this is the exact same use case that we showed before where the first command here errors out because we don't supply an actual address for it to ping. So what it will do is since the first statement did not evaluate as true, it's going to try to run the second command and see if that will return a proper error code. And since we are just running who am I, it does. And it 
it executes it properly and we're good to go. And that's how we get command ejection on the medium difficulty. Now we could also use the uh, single pipe to do this. So we could do a single pipe and then type in who am I? And that should work as well. Perfect. So there's a multitude of different ways you can do this. But again, this just showcases one example of bad practice where there's a small blacklist of characters. So there's still ways that we can work around that blacklist and that filter to go ahead and exploit the command ejection vulnerability. Now that we've seen how to solve the DVWA command ejection problem on medium difficulty, let's go down to the security tab, change it to high and hit submit. So I'll go over to the command ejection tab again, and let's take a look at the source code. So if we take a look, uh, there is a new set of substitutions in place where it should be replacing all sets of uh, an ampersand, semicolon, uh, a single pipe, hyphen, you know, so on and so forth. So it's really trying to avoid all these characters that can be used for command injection. Now, this is something that may work. Um, if you filter out, you know, all these sorts of characters, you know, the, it can be very hard or impossible to perform command injection. But in this case, the blacklist is not set properly. If you take a look at this example right here, this is where the vulnerability lies. And the fact that they are blocking the single pipe followed by a space. They're not blocking the single pipe by itself. So if we just pass something that is, you know, for example, a single pipe and then a payload without a space, we should be able to evade this filter. So again, this comes down to another problem with a badly supplied filter. So the user input is being sanitized, but not properly. So it's, you know, really not being sanitized well enough, and that leads to the command ejection. So let's take a look at how we can exploit this. So what we can do is do a similar payload as before. We'll do a single pipe and who am I? So if we hit submit on there, we can see we do get command execution there as well. But if we were to do a single pipe and space and then who am I? We'll hit submit, nothing happens, it errors out. So we can do this in a multitude of ways. We can do a single pipe, no space, and then cat slash Etsy password run that and we still get command ejection. So even on the high difficulty here, they do have a fairly good blacklist set up for different characters to filter out. So they do do a decent amount of sanitization on user input, but it's just not enough. The filter is not complete, so we can still get command ejection vulnerabilities happening. Now let's take a look at the impossible difficulty and take a look at the filter. So we'll change it to impossible, go back up to command ejection, take a look at the source code. Now you can see that there is a lot more going on in this source code. Basically, the gist of what they're doing is splitting the IP into four different octets, making sure that each octet is an integer, uh, and then it, it concatenates those all back together. So, you know, in, in doing these kind of filters and something like this, it's impossible for us to get command execution. Uh, the, the level of filtering that they're doing, it's not just a blacklist of characters they're making sure that fundamentally what we put in is an IP address. So let's see what happens if we enter in localhost. So we get invalid IP. So that's something that happens is now before we could, um, you know, give it a domain name or, you know, a host name, but even though it wanted an IP address, it would still resolve it. Now it's lost a little bit of functionality because we can still ping IP addresses, right? but we can't ping host names. So if you wanted to ping host names, you can imagine that you would have to have some something of a way more complex filter going on to filter the user input, and it can be really complicated. So that's why you can find a lot of issues that happen with user input not being properly sanitized. So I hope this has given you a great overview of how basic command ejection attacks work, and I encourage you to take a look at DVWA for yourself and practice some of this command ejection stuff. Try to get a reverse shell, try different payloads and see what you can come up with. The more comfortable you become with this, the more you'll be able to use it and the more of these vulnerabilities you'll be able to identify.